Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we were using 65 half to 67 half as support. And uh, the zone was tested multiple times in the overnight session and ended up finding responsive buyers. At this point, heading into the session, we know that the zone has been tested multiple times. So it does call for some caution. And in the event that we break below 65 half, it would bring 58 quarter to 61 quarter, or maybe even we could get a bounce off of 62 quarter. We just have to be careful on fading the move because uh, it could extend down to the 58 quarter, 61 quarter zone, which would basically be a test of Friday's breakout. Overall, the buy side is still pretty much in control, bigger picture. And given that we don't have any major economic releases due today, and um, you know we, we have a lot of earnings actually due tomorrow and a lot of economic reports due tomorrow, the expectation on the day is um, to look for more of a range bound session where the market doesn't really make um, you know any big directional pushes one way or the other. Now with the buy side in control we can quite easily balance between pre-market support and initial resistance or in the event of a breakdown we can balance between initial support and pre-market resistance or even initial support and initial resistance. Uh, but in the event that we head down we're probably not going to go all the way back up to um, Friday's high. Most likely, in the event of a breakdown, we'll find buyers over here and then balance between the initial support zone and the pre-market resistance zone, especially if uh, the open gap uh, doesn't get filled, right? So if we pretty much head down right off the open, that would actually be a higher probability long setup because we'd still have an open gap on the upside which could serve as a upside target. But overall, you know, the idea is that there is no major catalyst, um, at least on the calendar, that can move this market big when, one way or the other. Now, on the, uh, on the other headlines, as far as the problems in Ukraine, of course, there is some of that headline risk. And uh, with everything that's going on in, uh, you know, Israel and the violence over there, so there is some headline risk from that. Uh, which, you know, of course, is um, something you can't really plan for, but it's something to be aware of. But as far as the economic calendar goes, as far as the earnings calendar goes, there isn't any big news on deck that can really, um, you know, trigger a big sell-off or a huge rally. So most likely today is going to be a relatively narrow range balance type session, which means that, you know, if we get a break, below pre-market support. We'll look to fade that. We'll look to enter long. And at pre-market support, if you know the market is holding up really well and the other markets also start showing some strength, um, then you know even this pre-market support zone can actually hold heading into the open and result in a push up to 70 to 71 half um, and potentially back up towards Friday's high. It's just that you know buying pre-market support at this point because we've already gotten some rotation at that zone is a little bit riskier. So if you want to play it a little bit more conservative, um, then you know the better idea is to wait, let the market kind of tip its hand, see which way it's going, and then try to identify a good spot to uh, get on board. But overall, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be more of a range-bound session. So if you miss the move, then this is not a market that you want to chase, right? So if you're not getting a good price and the market already moves six or seven points in one direction then the probabilities of continuing from that point on for another five or six points are pretty low. And, um, you know, we'll also keep an eye on the volume. I'm expecting the volume to start declining as we head into the open and, uh, you know, be about average or maybe even below average. But overall, the main idea is still going to be that unless we see some very clear signs which are indicating, you know, a big break or a big liquidation or a big rally, by default, uh, we're going to expect a balance type session where the market doesn't really, um, you know, put in a wide range. And overall, any breakdown gets bought up, any rally up to initial resistance gets sold into, and we basically stay within, you know, the previous all time high, or well, the current all time high at 78 quarter, and we stay below that. So if we find buyers at pre market support, we can go up to initial resistance and uh, balance in this range. If we go lower, then we can balance between initial support, pre-market resistance. But overall, we're looking for a range type day. So those are our main thoughts heading into the open. 
let's see how well the buy side holds up right at pre-market support. That'll give us a good idea on how strong this market is. Keep an eye on TF. Um, in order to get some strength in this market, we do want to see TF trading above 47 to 48. And if it continues to trade below that, it just tells you that this market is more neutral um, and even a little bit weak rather than a very strong market. And that's where you want to be a little bit conservative once you start seeing that. But overall, you know, NASDAQ holding up pretty well overnight. ES has held up relatively well. And uh, even on TF, you know, even though we got a little pullback, it's still holding the breakout from Friday. So as long as that remains the case, you know, we can just balance at some of these higher prices. So let's see how well the buyers hold up the markets across the board and take it from there.